the 2021 State of DevOps report released last year. It contained findings about how teams navigate key areas of software delivery. We talked with one of the researchers, Dustin Smith, about the report section on team culture. What did this section of the report focus on? We look at how team culture impacts a team's ability to perform. We've done that for several years. And as I had mentioned, we look at a lot of factors. And team culture tends to be one that's really important because it has a direct connection to performance, both for a team's ability to deliver software quickly and reliably and meet their profitability goals, their organizational goals. What separates elite teams from the rest? Yeah, when we look at good team culture, we use Ron Westrom's model of organizational culture, which has essentially a taxonomy that runs the gamut from a pathological team that, you know, blames people for making errors, all the way to bureaucratic that has a little more red tape set up within it, to a generative team culture, which is performance oriented. It's highly cooperative and a culture of no blame, right? And so what what does a culture of no blame look like? Well, you have to be willing to give your teams some room to make mistakes. And they have to feel like if they make a mistake, they're not gonna be punished for that. And this creates a culture where you're more reflective, where you know that if you take a chance, if you take a risk, Even if you fail, you're still going to learn from that and you'll be better the next time you try something like that. And this creates a group of people that then want to innovate more and they're not afraid of doing so. They don't need to just stay within the rails of how the team was originally designed to operate. And we find that teams that are like that are higher performing. What is a generative team culture? Generative team culture comes from Ron Westrom's model of organizational culture, which runs from all the way to a pathological team culture, which is uh, punishes kind of people for making mistakes to a bureaucratic team culture, all the way to a generative team culture, which focuses not on the mistakes, but how you can improve from the mistakes and how best to work together to improve over time their performance oriented. They want, they see opportunities to get better and capitalize on those things. What is the makeup of generative teams? What we find is that when teams are made up of a group of people that are diverse, they come from different backgrounds and they feel like when they bring up something from their expertise when they have an opinion or an idea that their team will be accepting of that you know maybe not everyone will agree on it but their opinion is valued and there can be value taken from their point Um, when teams feel like they can do this they feel comfortable sharing ideas and that they'll be supported by the people around them they feel a part of that group they're higher performing but they're also less likely to experience burnout as a result How does team culture relate to burnout? So we use Christine Maslick's definition of burnout for this report. And we looked at things like, do you feel exhausted when you're doing your work? Are you bringing those negative feelings home? And is that affecting your home life outside of work? Are you able to actually separate yourself from your work? Um, Are you starting to feel cynical about that? And we, we put all of that together and we look at which teams are experiencing that and we find that teams with a good team culture so are they generative people feel like they belong do they feel included are half as likely to experience burnout and why that's so important is that we're going through a pandemic right now and a lot of people are experiencing burnout so what's the core idea of this section of the report i think trying to motivate people to focus not just on what are the technical practices that need to be implemented on a team in order to be successful, but also look at your people over those things and focus on how can we make our people feel more supported? How can they take small risks? How can they feel like they can innovate? Focusing on those things are a win for employers, for businesses, because it 
like I mentioned earlier, reduces burnout, reduces attrition, all while increasing productivity and um, organizational goals. Where can you just go to learn more? That's a great question. For everything DevOps at Google, you can go to cloud.google.com slash DevOps. There you can find the State of DevOps 2021 report. Um, like I mentioned, it's completely free. You just need to sign up and you can download the report. Um, but there are also other assets there. Like if you want to read about any of these individual capabilities that we mentioned here, for example, team culture, burnout, we have specific articles written about those topics and how you could uh, apply those practices. Um, and finally, we have the DevOps Quick Check, which also allows you to measure your own performance in a really four, five question survey and get a rough idea of how are you performing relative to the industry.